Hi, James. So Hello. good to be here with you again today. Um, and then let's just get talking, I guess. So obviously we're here because of Saint Laurent and your new collaboration. And I wanted to get started and just talk about your initiation to fashion photography. How did that come around? Right from the beginning, I would say my idea of uh, taking photographs is to make people younger than they really are. So I called my studio Ever Young. Mm -hmm. So I, I got in touch, you know, in, in uh, the practice of fashion right from the word go, you know, taking where people come to my studio in their various clothes or inventions or new things that they've, they've produced to make themselves beautiful. This was in Accra. I got the name for my studio because while I was in school, we had a, a, a lesson to do with English. We were given a, a piece to read and then to answer questions. I do not the beautiful goddess of the Norsemen lived in a pretty grove called Ever Young. She had a wonderful grove that where she changed people from whatever they are, old and weary, to young. Later, when I did fashion photography, also I thought, oh, this is a a name I should have for my studio. So you kind of took the energy of a doona to transform. Uh, that, that is it, that is it. That's where I got the idea. People think that I took it because I'm young or I like to remain young, but it's for my studio, for my, uh, my clients. Obviously you photograph many different people and we were talking earlier about Erin Elbrecht and who's your number one model. Yes. How did you and, because obviously you're talking about transforming people, how did you and your subjects get that connection? Talking about my favorite model, Eileen Ibrek, uh, I was commissioned by Drum to take photographs of young African girls for their covers. And, uh, I queued up, I, I met her in a bus queue. She was way ahead of me, but I spotted her from a distance and started watching her. And I made sure that she went on the same bus or I went on the same bus as she did and managed to sit by her and started chatting her, you know, talking, and finally, I said, if you are interested, you know, uh, this is my address, or this is the address of Drum. Um, I would like to photograph you if you are interested. You can get in touch with Drum. They will get in touch with me and we will meet. So what do you think it was that allowed her to be... Because she wasn't a model, was she? she no, was she wasn't class. a model, and she had just left school, I think, learning to be a secretary or something of the sort. And she was due to travel and go on holidays to Africa. And so I went straight to Drum, gave them her address, and I asked them to send uh, a, cop uh, a copy of Drum to her to study and see if she's interested. And then, you know, I was uh, contacted and we met. And slowly, slowly, somehow, when I say slowly, uh, one session, another session, followed by another session, and, you know, it just clicked. A drum liked the results of the pictures we took. Uh, she liked my company, you know, posing for me, so, and later she decided to go to modeling school instead of secretarial school. So she did. Unfortunately, uh, I think she modeled for a South African company. And later when they found she was colored, they cut her off. 
Okay. So she left London and went to America. So at the time, obviously, that's when you're shooting Drum Magazine. Um, it was a very important publication at the time. How was that for you as a Ghanaian photographer, seeing your work internationally? I, I, wasn't, I wasn't really conscious of it. I was trying technically and artistically to make the mark. Because so what was when you say the mark? What is the mark? Oh, nobody asks uh, uh, an African to photograph somebody for his or her magazine, yeah. or even no African models were on the covers like that. You know, I just I left school and was trying to make any beats or working, and through drum, I had already worked for drum but not on covers or not in color at all. Okay. And so coming to England and then, you know, going to school, learning a little bit about color, uh, drum was the first opening. In fact, it was the only opening. Otherwise, I don't think I would have got the chance. So if I got a thing like that, I tried to uh, copy or make a mark and in fact, I lived in Kent. And any time I traveled to London and there was a cover of drum with my picture on it amongst the other national covers, mm -hmm. I said, yes, you know, I, I really got some satisfaction. I didn't tell the uh, news vendor or anybody anything. The only person who knew was somebody to whom I gave the transparency to be sent for processing. Okay. You know, even one day he said, do you get uh, well, uh, mentioned whenever your picture appears? I said, no, you know, as long as I'm paid. He said, no, you must be, you know, accredited for the pictures. He was the only one, but nobody knew when I come to London, I go to him, but when I see my pictures on, on the covers, on, on the stores, uh, you know, that's when inwardly I felt happy. Well, it was monumental, because obviously first, like, you know, there wasn't African models, it's the 50s, 60s. At the time there wasn't hair makeup stylists. So how was it like creating a fashion image? Well, an image with fashion, without a team? Without a team, that's the thing. Even the clothes, she brought her own clothes. I didn't have any say about it, but anytime she comes and, you know, I, I select a location, I'm conscious of location, you know. I like to produce, uh, you know, produce where we are you know, connect the image with a place in London. Even though I did a lot of photography 10 years in Ghana before coming to England, the idea of really fashion didn't come to my head till I went to the Medway College of Art where the senior photographer, the teacher, was an artist before he became uh, a photographer. So there's always that art and fashion and, you know, showing uh, the difference okay. in pictures was there. And, you, you know, you can't help but copy, mm. you know, and that was uh, why or how I became fashion conscious. And, you know, so anytime I'm working, I try to copy him or produce that art in my work. Okay. So obviously, let's go back a bit in time. So obviously before we was in London with drum, you were in Ghana, obviously capturing our independence, working with a lot of important people. How would you say those formative years influenced you moving into the 70s of photography? I think it did a lot for me because uh, during the time that I started, you know, after apprenticeship and started, we had that uh, fight for Ghanaian independence. So there was a change, there was a feeling 
of some sort. There was a fight, you know, that we were changing, we were becoming better, and, you know, the world was had their eyes on Ghana and so on. So whatever you did, more or less, whether you know it or not, you are in the news and you've got to be. So would you say, like you just said, whether you know it or not, because it's something that I think me and my friends, we echo, even though obviously Ghana's in the pants 50s and I'm born in the 90s, <laughs> within our work, there is this weird feeling that the eye is on us, there's a change. So can you see the change that's similar to the, when you were taking photos of Vert Nkrumah to like my generation of photographers now, where we look at you as like Grandfather James and like without your images, we couldn't exist. But there's this energy of we need to almost be not politicised, but we need to be energised in our images. Do you see the correlation now? Apart from uh, portrait photography that... I was apprenticed to, you know, the photographer was a, a, a good portrait photographer. So I was trained as a portrait photographer. I was lucky enough to go into photojournalism because the daily graphic was uh, established at that time, you know, during the fight, during the time I was you know, just finished apprenticeship and started. The Daily Graphic also started. And somehow they were looking for somebody and they came to me. And so I was the first photojournalist or the the photographer for the paper. So anytime I was working, I was news conscious the extraordinary conscious, you know, things that you bring to the general public, anything that is different that you want to bring to the, you know, anything that is abnormal that you want to bring to the general public. I was doing, you know, approaching my portraiture as well as news, people who are important, people who meant somebody, or even people who would in future become Great, you know. So could you say you're almost, not only being a portrait photographer, but you're looking at culture, you're looking at the happenings that's happening and being part of the energy to reflect it? Into that, the world. That's it. So my photography or my approach to photography was, was quite different from everybody because not many people did that apprenticeship and then doing newspaper work, you know, because... In fact, when (laughs) I was a little boy going to school, we had a school magazine, and I was made the editor of the school magazine. And, you know, that gave me a taste of what the power of a newspaper man or what the newspaper is. It's almost as if, like, along your timeline of life, God or whoever is giving you little 15-year-old James, you're going to be an editor and then you're going to be a portrait photographer and then work at drum. But um, it's something that we've spoken about outside of these conversations, but it's about technique and about training. And I want to comment on colour, colour photography. We we, Did we get there? All the time I was in Ghana, yeah. colour didn't come into my life or my photography or anything at all. I didn't even touch a color film. I didn't have anything. I knew somebody who tried to practice it, but I didn't go into it at all. Either it was too much for me or I couldn't afford it. And the black and white was, it was when I came to England that luckily I jumped into color. But while I was in Ghana, color didn't come. You know, the news, uh, the result, technique was my number one okay. uh, to, to start what, with. So what was, why was technique so important to you? One, where two people taught me photography, or apart from my, uh, the master, my cousin who taught me, you know, full-time apprenticeship, I met another cousin who uh, also knew photography, but his was the journalistic side and comparing uh, 
your work to other photographers and so on and so forth. We more like, you know, England, England, you know, development, uh, completely different from the old big camera, you know, black cloth over your head, you know, that's, and I had both training and not many had that. So all the time I was working, I had, I was in a world of my own. Okay. I didn't have any competition. I just managed to learn my own things when I passed one or succeeded in doing a technique or mastering a technique, I go on to the next one. You know, uh, I wish that photographers cooperated a little bit more so that they learn from one another. I would say, because I, I used to say that as a kid, going to Ghana, I always wished us art exhibits, but like from our timeline, like you're 1929, I'm 1999. <laughs> there was hardly any, like, until I met you and your photography, I didn't know there was similar photographers in Ghana. Do you think it's just because there's not many of us? There, there are many, and there are many good photographers too. There are many, but they have to cooperate and say two or three or four can come together with a number of images and exhibit. Mm. And uh, why is it important to exhibit, would you say? You know, uh, criticize their own work. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they have to meet and criticize them and then select or, you know, the best ones. And then at the end of the year or something like that, uh, exhibit in a hall mm -hmm. and, you know, publicize it and go on, let people go and look at them free. And I'm sure that there are embassies who would like to assist in this, you know, even if they cannot produce the prints to the quality or the sizes, the embassies can bear the cost and get them printed outside. Yeah. And, and they can uh, show them. This going on one or two, three years, then their work will be seen outside and they can even now start to show their own work outside. Because at the moment, it seems as if uh, James Bano is the only Ghanaian photographer. No, oh, and you know. me, and Cam yeah, Blatty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh -huh. How does exhibiting your work change how you view your oh, um, um, I, I, I feel, you know, it made a, a big difference for me, you know. It, exhibiting my work uh, makes you know what, who you are, what you can do, and it makes you see the qualities in your work. If there are some that are not good, you will hear from viewers, you know, people who go, the ones that they, they make uh, exhibiting your work. You can't, you can't have a, a thing like a beautiful artwork and put it under your bed, you know, sure. you, you show it, see. yes. And those that have shown, um, now being recognized internationally. When I was taking them, I had no idea that my pictures will travel anywhere. Today uh, is setting an example to others. And in fact, like- uh, Even for me, because when we first met, you told me you should exhibit, you should exhibit. And then I did, I've done, I, think, I think I've done four. How good. Because good. That, I was petrified. And you can, you can tell me the feeling oh, that it, you have. It changed because uh, I remember right. showing you images before mm. I did my book. And then you said exhibit. I remember sitting and I put all the images out before everyone came. Mm. And I didn't like it. <laughs> not that I was sat there, I was like, oh, I get what James means. Because once it's out there, it's not mine. Yes, it's, it's, it's the, the viewers. And, and you will see and hear what people say about them. Yeah. And you can do your corrections. Change it, view can, my subject yes. differently, even lighting, yes. even how I framed it. Um, but even now, so now you've got a collaboration with Saint Laurent, how does that feel? That is making me very humble. I should be proud, but you know, I, this is something that I didn't think of. You know, I, I feel so proud 
I feel so proud that I've got this stage, uh, you know, in the col collaboration and what it's going to bring anymore. I, in fact, I didn't mention, but when I came here, uh, I've been thinking of helping others. Or uh, what shall I say, James Bano Foundation. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've formed a foundation and it's been mm -hmm. registered in this country. We've even uh, made a photographic competition and given the first prize. We're going to go to the next one. Oh, and I feel so, so proud that what I'm doing, I'm not the only one who is uh, inheriting or enjoying or benefit, but others are going to benefit as well. You know, especially in education. I say education, education, education. However good a photographer you are, but you can't be all that good without education. But when you add education to it, when you, you, you become inquisitive, you, you become a better photographer. It's like that saying you said, what is it when, was it mankind will only uh, yeah, move yeah, forward? What's uh, it called again? Uh, I, I civilization can, yeah. flourishes Wait, when men plant trees under which they themselves will mm. never sit. You know, when you do anything, you don't do it because you're going to get the benefit or the profit the same time. It will be other people or some other time that the profit or the benefit will uh, show. So if you don't have that heart yeah. and the patience to wait and help people for the future, you so don't is do that it. what you're doing now? Because obviously you've got the foundation, you're doing the exhibitions, books, like you showed us just now like all of these photos. Is that your seeds? that you're planting for oh, the next Oh, that, that definitely, definitely. And, and people will see, you know, not only I am doing it now, but people will see the good in it mm. and also do it. You see, people will see, the, and I feel so, so proud. Nobody will think that a poor Ghanaian where, you know, there's nothing in the country, you know, when he gets pictures, sold or he's got anything, he's going to give it to others or f do a foundation. Nobody would think that. But, you know, inside me, I feel very proud. And uh, honestly, that makes me feel more proud as a photographer. Do you see a difference in how Ghanaians and art is viewed now than in, say, the 50s and 60s? I think, I think, um, more is being seen of Ghana or from Ghana. People are now progressing more, developing more in the art and changing and using uh, photography uh, to communicate more. Do you see your hand in that there? To me, I see the link very clearly. There's, you know, you took pictures of our independence, of the political time, even the, just the pictures of women that you met um, outside a mall or next to a car, it's showing a time in history where, in reality, people just saw us as impoverished or, you know, it was after independence. I feel very happy. For instance, at uh, my last exhibition, uh, a group of young people was formed or they came out as a result of my exhibition and they are uh, more or less following. Some are rappers, some are artists, some are uh, graphic designers, photographers, uh, singers, and so on. They form, uh, and they are, they are copying me or copying my work. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I met them, I went to their uh, exhibitions, and, since I, and I feel, yes, at least I've done something. Or, they are also going to set example for others to copy. And that is what I, I, I feel very proud. I feel very proud that young people are going to copy uh, what I've done. At 94 in two or three months time, there isn't much you know, time left. So 
I thank God that, you know, uh, I'm leaving something that will leave a sign or people to remember me and copy what I'm doing and do something good. In fact, when I was in Ghana, apart from my photography, my next interest is, is in music and entertainment. I, I took charge of a group of uh, performers, cultural performers. And, you know, they were young. They were, they were still going to school. And I convinced them to come and train. I got people to train them. Today, they are all over the diaspora. Mm -hmm. You know, they are all over the diaspora. And when I hear of them or see them performing, when I hear a CD that one has done, I said, yes. It's I've your little it. seeds yes. that you planted. You know. It's amazing. And even sometimes they remind me that I, I say, I can't drum, I can't play anything, but I tell them what to do. You know, they laugh at that. But looking back on your history and your time, mm -hmm. is there anything you'd change? I don't know of what I've thought of changing. I don't, I don't know, in, in government or my life or the children or, you know, I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll beg all, especially Ghanaian, you know, government to, to give education to their, you know, uh, give education a chance, even if that becomes priority. Yeah. Because they, they are the people to get the key to do and the next thing, corrections and so on. Lastly, I just wanted to, almost just for like the next generation, what would you, obviously you're, you're leaving the seeds with the foundation. Is there anything you'd want to just let the next generation of photographers do? Cooperate, cooperate and help because I, I maybe I'm being big headed and thinking this, but there is no, Work of life, business in life, or anything that doesn't need photography. Photography affects or touches every every part. You know, everybody needs photography, or you need photography at a certain time in your life. Or the use of photography is so general. You know that. You don't even need to be a professional. Okay. You know, you don't need to be a professional. Today, you know, with the internet, you can do everything and get it, but you can't leave photography. Yeah, I would suggest and advise that everybody learns photography and uh, uses it for the good of human beings, for the good of human beings. Yeah. But thank you, James. Honestly, oh, it's always a pleasure talking with you. But yeah, that was me thank for today. You. Thank you, thank you, thank, <laughs> thank you. you. No, thank, thank you very much. Thank you.